Okay, moving right along. Hello, everyone. If, if you're just joining us for this particular presentation, I'm Aaron Lieberman. I'm a Cloud Practice Manager at Big Compass. I'm an API designer and security specialist and, and creator and uh, evangelist also. I've, I've hit almost every perspective on APIs. I'll be your MC for the stage, and I'm very excited um, for this next presentation to announce Fran Mendez. He's the founder at Async API Initiative and director of engineering at Postman. And he will be talking about the state of Async API. So nice segue actually from, from Ben's presentation there. And Fran, whenever you're ready, you can share your screen and take it away. All right. So Hello, my name is Fran Mendez. I work as a director of engineering at Postman, and I'm also the creator of the Async API initiative and specification. Today, um, I would love to first thank uh, the organization of API Days for uh, inviting me once again. And uh, I would love to speak today about the future of API specifications or what I think it will be, it should be the future of uh, API specifications, right? So let's go. This talk is a little bit of a mix of a story of what happened to me in the past while I was working on async API, plus some suggestions and uh, things that I've been learning uh, along this along this way, right? So back in 2019, I was invited to speak at a Nordic APIs conference. And I was really, I was shaken. Like I was freaking out because I was about to announce that um, I was going to dedicate full time to async API because yeah, I managed to find a bunch of sponsors, really good sponsors. And uh, therefore, uh, it will allow me to work on it full time, plus think about the growth of the initiative. So it wasn't a, uh, a side project anymore, right? So I was there on stage. Um, and uh, at the end of the talk, one guy raises his hand and say and, and ask a question and, and he told me like but isn't it like avro schema uh like for you for some of you may know avro so it's an apache project and he asked is this a replacement for avro and then i have to explain that um that no it, it isn't uh it actually can be compatible with avro and at the time, that was only an idea that we can integrate async API with Avro. And nowadays, it's a reality. So you can use Avro inside async API. And I explained, like, Avro is just to define the content of the message, the shape of the message. And async API goes beyond the message. It goes like, uh, for instance, what your application is doing, if it's publishing or subscribing to which uh, specific topic or channel, and uh, what's the uh, where is the server? Where is the broker? What is the server? And and the shape of the message, of course, right? But um, when I finished the talk, there was some uh, some people come to talk to me in private, and two guys in a row uh, came to me and asked, "Hey, Fran, so have you thought about merging with OpenAPI?" like combining open api and async api together into a single spec or merging as in becoming part of the open api initiative and uh, at that time i was like yeah i mean this this was an option we we were already starting uh discussing the um, the idea of merging open api and async api together as a single initiative and also as a single spec but uh we didn't come to an agreement at that time yet. Then on, uh, on the same year, right? On December the same year, I was invited by the 
great people of API days to speak in, in Paris, in their event in Paris. And uh, that was my first, uh, the, my first uh, event in API Days Paris. That was my, that was my first time in Paris, actually, and uh, I didn't know much people there. So luckily, I found Kill Lane there, so he could lend me a hand, and he was super helpful and in introducing many people to me. So so yeah, that uh, that was super helpful. And uh, on on that event. I met who's now my friend and Anjay Yarsina, who used to work for Adidas. And he at the same time introduced me, Samir and Sunny, who happens to work for Adidas as well now. And uh, we were discussing like how they were doing APIs at Adidas. And they were already doing some a bunch of REST APIs, GraphQL APIs, they were doing Kafka already but they had something like uh, like a developer portal for REST APIs, another developer portal for GraphQL APIs, and they didn't have anything for asynchronous APIs like Kafka, uh, the Kafka communication or microservices, uh, internal microservices they have. So they wanted to implement something like this. And I, and I thought like, this will be a good opportunity for raising KPI. Uh, to step in and say, hey, let's just build this together, right? But um, they wanted to, of course, have something that combines everything because having a developer portal for each kind of API is a pain, right? You have to maintain three developer portals, each of them with their own set of features. That's a pain, right? So the conversation uh, stopped, stopped there and uh, we, we kept uh, speaking much later, but the conversation was always around how can we make things work with async API and open API together, right? So yeah, on the next uh, year, a few, actually a few months after I helped organize API Days Barcelona and uh, I was at, at a bar in that, you know, historic, historic neighborhood of El Born in Barcelona. And uh, that was on the speaker's dinner that usually happens before the event. And I was, again, with my beer hanging out in the, in the, um, in the door, at the door of the, of the bar, having some good conversations there with people. And again, many people came to me and repeated the same question over and over separately. And I was, I was like, what the hell is happening, right? Why is everybody asking the same? And it was always like, have, have you thought about merging with OpenAPI or merging OpenAPI and SMK API together into a single spec? Uh, that would be super cool. So at that time, I already had the chat. Uh, we already had a chat with OpenAPI. We already discussed uh, the possibilities and uh, we ended up saying no let's not merge the specs at least right let's not combine the two specs because that would put a lot of pressure on the um, on the tooling side right on the tool on the tooling vendors side so they will have to it's it's already complicated for them to implement full support for open api so imagine if you have to tell them to implement um if you have to tell them to implement um support for open API plus async API, which means that now you open up things to infinite protocols. I mean, not, not infinite, but many protocols and many, not just uh, just a schema, but Avro and many other things, right? So yeah, um, we came to the agreement that that will be, um, that will not be viable basically. However, um, when I was when I was telling people uh, that response, like, "Hey, yeah, we talked about it, we chat about it, but yeah, we came to the agreement that uh, merging the both, merging the two, uh, will not be a, a viable idea because yeah, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on the tooling vendor side, and people were like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I understand, yeah, yeah," but. Yeah, but their face were like, yeah, 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 like, 
not my problem, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I understand it's a, I understand your concern, but it's like, yeah, you're still not solving my problem. And I, I was giving this response to them and I was kind of satisfied, like, yeah, I now got a, an excuse of why not to do it, right? Uh, or why we should be doing it. But I had an excuse of why not to do it. So it, it was like kind of solved. But over time, I, it, it kept him thinking, like, why is people asking me to merge Async API and Open API together? Is it because they want to have the same, um, let's say, the same spec to support multiple protocols and multiple uh, types of APIs? Is it for another reason? Honestly, I didn't know at the time. And um, why, you might be wondering, why am I telling you these stories, right? Um, well, mainly because this is cheaper than a therapist. So, sorry, you're my therapist today. <laughs> but now, seriously, um, why really people want to merge Async API and Open API together? That's the question. Think about it. Um, I'm not gonna answer right now. I'm not gonna answer straightforward. Just want you to think. But before, let me show you the current landscape or ecosystem of specs and API types. So we have like many types or styles of APIs like REST, GraphQL, gRPC, messaging or event driven and SOAP, okay? And uh, there are a bunch of API specifications as well. These are not all the API specifications that exist. Um, there are uh, a bunch more, but these are, let's say the, the primary ones, if you want, for each API style. So you, you got Open API, Async API, GraphQL, gRPC, blah, 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 right? There are a bunch. So the thing here is that if you want to do REST, you probably choose Open API or you choose RAML. If you choose Open API, you're inherently choosing JSON schema, even if you don't know, but the Open API uses internally JSON schema as well as uh, async API. And RAML has its own data type format, right? So there are three specs here to, to work with REST APIs. In case of GraphQL, you can only use GraphQL. You have to use their own language which is cool, but it's another one. It's a different one. If you have gRPC, same thing as with GraphQL or similar, you have gRPC plus protobuf, which is their own language and another language, different from OpenAPI and GraphQL. So different thing. If you're doing messaging like, I don't know, like AMQP, MQTT, Kafka, WebSockets, any other kind of messaging, uh, protocols, you have async API, and you have inherently, you have by default JSON schema as with open API, but that there's also the option that you can use Avro. And optionally, if your tooling supports it, you can use RAML data types with async API as well. So that was done on purpose. So you can reuse your RAML data types from a RAML a REST API definition and uh, message and a messaging API or an async API definition, right? So again, a different uh, API style, a different spec. And lastly, my, my you might think that SOAP is already there. Might be right. I think you're wrong if you think like that. <laughs> um, but um, especially in, in big companies, this is a reality. So there are many SOAP APIs yet. There's many WSDL. I don't know how to pronounce this WSDL and XSD. So there's still a lot of this. So this is not dead yet. It looks like it's going to die at some point, but uh, because nobody is creating new things with this, but it's still pretty much alive. So Look at the look at the, the the whole thing. Look at the um, at the current ecosystem of 
API styles and, and, and their specifications. So again, why people want us to merge with OpenAPI? Like I was really curious, like why is it, why is it that they want us to, to merge? People really want a single spec? I don't think so. Like people really want a single file maybe, like just to have a single file where you define everything uh, and everything is in the same place in the same file because specifications are often composed of multiple files already. So, so maybe uh, that might be a reason, that may not be a reason. I don't know. I don't think it's a reason because like I said, sometimes you have an open API file that is composed or an open API definition that is composed of many other definitions of many other files, sorry. So I don't think that's the case, right? I don't think it's the problem is in having things all the things in a single file, right? I think in my opinion is that what people are looking for and after asking a lot, uh, asking back the people during this last two or three years, what I found out is that people are actually looking for a single process, a single tool, right? So you have, you want to have a single place or a single tool or a single build process or process where you can work with any kind of apis right you don't want to be choosing and learning a new language for each api style you want everything to work seamlessly right but fran this is you know you might say fran you you uh, this is not possible because each one is a separate spec blah 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 right yes that's precisely the problem that we are always arguing against the user saying, ah, no, it's, it's impossible, uh, you'll have to figure out. So we're handling, we're handing the responsibility over the user instead of taking the responsibility ourselves, the API, the API specifications creators, right? So, so yeah, I think what people are looking for here is the processes to become easier and more seamless between all the API styles, right? And, Look again at the at the ecosystem. So this is what I said before. Like this is uh, the current uh, API styles and API specifications that you can find uh, pretty much in the in the market if you want. All right. But now imagine that you're building a new product. So you you're worried about your product making money or making your product work, whatever is your responsibility, you're worried about your product. You want something to work, some business that you created, whatever, you want it to work. And you have to take decisions around security, if you're gonna use OAuth 2 or not, if you're gonna encrypt the data at rest or not, depends on what you're doing, how you're gonna deploy your app, if you're going to deploy to the cloud, uh, which cloud, how, blah, blah, blah. There are many ways to, to, to do it, right? But um, you choose uh, a deployment system. How are you going to store the, the information? So are you going to use a NoSQL database or a SQL database? Um, which one, right? But then in each of these areas and, and many others, there's like kind of unified experience. So if you want to, as for instance, decide on a storage system, you probably have to choose between SQL or SQL or uh, no SQL, right? Um, right, but you probably don't have to, on your, on your code, you probably don't have to make the SQL queries yourself by hand or the NoSQL queries um, by, by hand yourself, right? You probably use an, an or, or ORM, <laughs> right? To handle this for yourself. So independently of the storage system that, they, that is behind, this ORM is gonna handle this for you. And your code is gonna be the same. If you're gonna choose a deployment, there are many standardized ways to deploy to different cloud providers. 
and, and so on. And for security, it's the same thing. There are many standardized things. But now you come to the place where, hey, we want to offer a, um, an API to our consumers, to our users, a REST API. And yeah, now people are asking for GraphQL as well. So we have to offer a GraphQL as well. Um, and also people, not people, sorry. And, and also internally ourselves, we're using Kafka. So yeah, we need to use async API for Kafka and open API for REST and GraphQL for the GraphQL, the GraphQL schema for the GraphQL API. Um, cool. That, that is a huge problem. That is a huge uh, problem in user experience if you think about it. Like when it comes to defining the APIs, how you're gonna do APIs in your product, in your business, it becomes a, like a stone in your way, right? Like you have a rock in your way and you cannot continue. It's, it's always, you feel like you always have to um, put the stones out and, 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 and or jump over them. And it's not seamless. The, the experience is not seamless there. And what, what I mean about seamless is, can't we just have something like an ORM for storage, but for APIs? Like I just want to write the code or the definition or whatever. Uh, is in a single place, just once. And it works for my REST API, for GraphQL, and for my Kafka microservices. Um, we don't have that, right? So, so yeah, I think this is, this. to me, this is a huge problem that we're putting on the user land and that we're not attacking as per the, you know, API specification owners. What I mean is the, uh, ourselves as a specification owners, owners, we're not attacking this problem, right? So, so how do we solve this, right? Uh, that was my, my concern here is okay, so the problem is clear. We're part, we at Async API, I as the creator of Async API as well, I am part of the problem. I have been part of the problem. I, I st I'm still part of the problem actually, because it's not solved. So I'm still part of the problem. Uh, the open API folks are part of the problem. The GraphQL folks are part of the problem. You know, gRPC and everyone, you know, it's part of the problem. Uh, and the problem is actually beyond each of us, right? It's something that we need to fix uh, all together, all, all of us together, right? So how do we solve this without merging into single spec? Because remember, um, we can probably we can probably um, merge into a single spec, uh, Open API and Async API. But then, what happens with GraphQL? And what happens with gRPC? And what happen what happens with Wisdom and Raml and, and and others? Right? Are we gonna merge all of it together? Are we gonna all agree into a single? specification that will rule the world, uh, maybe one day. I don't think uh, that's gonna ever happen. I hope I'm wrong and that will end up happening and that we all happily collaborate and everything is rainbows and unicorns, but I don't think this is gonna happen. So in the meantime, how do we solve this problem without merging the specs, right? So before, I go, I go into details on how this could be solved. I would love to hi, uh, highlight which things are solved or in the way to be solved or kind of solved, which ones are, which problems are um, not yet solved, but we're doing something and um, which other problems are just being completely ignored, right? Each of them are in green, yellow, and red, as you can see there on the on the slides. So, as per specs, I will I will highlight that having multiple schema definition languages, multiple paradigms, multiple protocols, all of them are solved, and you probably um, it's kind of solved actually. It's like it's solved at least from my perspective because I'm probably super biased towards async API. Uh, it's solved on the async API side, 
right? That you can have multiple schema definition languages like Avro, Raml data types, JSON schema. You have multiple paradigms. You can have request response messaging, uh, and you have multiple protocols as well, right? Uh, including HTTP and Async API. That's also supported. So at least Async API is doing something there. Um, must be extensible. So so right now we have Open API and Async API using the same extensibility system, which is this X dash extensions that you can use on, on the spec. Uh, but I don't think, or at least I don't know of, uh, I don't think it's possible to extend GraphQL, uh, like customize it with extensions. In the, I mean, this, the, the language itself, right? Like the, the schema language and the gRPC plus protobuf, right? I think it's impossible. I will be happy to uh, learn if that's possible and I, I didn't find it. That would be super cool, right? So, so yeah, there are some doing some work and some others not doing anything at all. So that's kind of extensibility. The specs need to be composable. And this is kind of happening at some point. So for instance, OpenAPI is leveraging uh, JSON schema, Async API is leveraging JSON schema, and Async API is leveraging Bramble data types and Avro as well. So these all are specs, API specs, and they are combined into a single spec, into a single file if you want, right? Or into a single document if you want. So, but still, for instance, it's impossible to do the similar uh, a similar thing between GraphQL and Async API and GraphQL and Open API, it's impossible to combine the two, right? So yeah, that would be great to find a way to to from the spec perspective to be able to combine all the specs. And then that's a problem of the tools to to understand that, right? So as per tools, I think we have uh we need to find a way, all of us, and I'm including the community here. So you who are watching this and you like APIs or you're starting with APIs and you love to contribute to open source and standards. I think we also step up here and there needs to, there, there's a need for collaborative parsers and validators. What does it mean? So for instance, if I want to, um, say, I don't know, if I want to validate a GraphQL document, I still have, and I'm using Node.js for instance, I still have a Node.js parser and validator that should help me validate this GraphQL document. If I have a, a and I mean, I still have one and this will be officially maintained or at least somehow not officially, at least there should be uh, the GraphQL foundation should be behind it and helping maintain it, right? Which I think is the case right now, by the way. Um, but that, for instance, is not the case for OpenAPI. So OpenAPI doesn't maintain tooling. So th they only maintain the spec. So I can't find a parser that will be officially maintained by OpenAPI initiative that has all the um, that is 100% compliant with the open API spec. And then what happens is that if I want to create a tool myself, I have to first create a tool that will understand open API completely like uh, and fully compliant, right? That's not an option, right? Like I, I think that's an option actually, uh, and it's there, it's happening, but when, what end, uh, ends up happening is that you end up with a lot of tools doing the same thing and none of them are actually fully compliant. So, so yeah, we end up with a mess in the tooling, right? Um, in the case of evolution, so what, what do I mean here with evolution? I think um, parsers and SDKs that allow you to work with um, a specific spec, like say GraphQL for instance, or open API, if you're gonna work with a specific parser and it has a, an, an API, 
right? It has a, a what I mean, API is a function and, and return, you call a function, it returns something, right? This kind of API. Um, I think the, the, the design of these parsers should be done in a way that encourages change and evolution over time. So they should, as much as possible, of course, abstract you from the structure of the specs. Because if this, the structure of the spec, say for instance, Open API launches version four or five, or Async API launches version three or four, uh, and they change the structure of the document and move things around, they don't provide any new value for you, but things are like kind of reorganized, then you get a break in change. And if your parser is tightly coupled to the structure of the spec, then you're gonna have a break in change in your code as well. When you really didn't, shouldn't be taking a break in change because there's no new value. There's no new value for you. Only things have been rearranged. So it's the responsibility of the parser to look at the document and see, oh, this is the new version five. Okay, so for getting all the messages or all the uh, endpoints of, an, of a REST API, I should be looking at the paths uh, key instead of the endpoints key or the other way around, I don't, I don't care. Um, so these things will be abstracted on the tooling and it's not yet happening, right? Um, authoring tools, I think tools or products here, uh, I'm, I'm talking about them um, as a single category if you want. So I think um, Stoplight is doing a great job here with OpenAPI. Mm, I can't see many other tools for authoring APIs other than uh, for other than Postman maybe like Postman having their own, uh, so Postman has uh, its own um, collections system, collections spec, right? And uh, and it allows you to to export to OpenAPI and all this, all this stuff, right? So it's a it's a different approach, but you still can author your APIs on Postman. In the case of Stoplight, you can it's like tightly mapped to OpenAPI. How you it's like having a UI to create your um, to create your OpenAPI file. And if they add support for async API, which I hope uh, they do, um, then I'm assuming that it will be similar. You have a nice UI and that really maps super well to the, to the content, uh, let's say to the structure of the spec, right? If you want. Um, they're both different approaches. There are tools, there are products. So, so yeah, we're doing something, right? So that's, that's actually cool. Um, interoperability between tools. I think this is, this is really important. So if we all want to kind of form like a super, um, a super body, if you want, of uh, API specifications, right? And the tools that all work together seamlessly, I think at some point we have to agree on those tools um, having like common interfaces, if you want, right? So if I'm using, um, JSON, for instance, for uh, async API and open API, then mm, the GraphQL tool, the GraphQL parser maybe, should be able to take um, GraphQL as JSON if you want, or output this as JSON so I can work with JSON because my tools work with JSON. Anyway, uh, that these are just examples, right? Or the other way around, right? Like, um, so if I'm working, um, if I'm working on async API and need something uh, structured as a as a GraphQL data type, then it it will be cool to have it like this, like following the data type specification of GraphQL. Um, this is not possible yet, but I think this will help. So tools becoming interoperable between them, um, that will be cool. And something that we're doing super well, 
I think this is the best thing that we're doing so far is that everything is open source. So yay, at least, <laughs> right? At least we're on the right path. And what does it mean that it's open source? So I've been telling all the time, uh, we as the, referring as we as the uh, specs authors, right? Like we all, we're all responsible for this, but yes and no, right? So we're all responsible for this, but usually we are people interested in this area and not my case luckily and not the case of my team luckily but in many other projects like json schema and like open api they're not getting paid to work on the spec they're just doing this in their spare time most of them right so yeah these people are actually giving you free time and their free time right to 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 offer you something so if you're a user i encourage you to jump and from time to time, if you can't do it every day, of course, and collaborate and contribute to the tools. Contributions go in a wide, super wide range. So it can be uh, just creating an issue and describing a, po a potential solution. It can be writing a blog post. It can be talking in a conference about the tool. There are many ways, right? Because if you speak at the conferences or write blog posts, you're probably helping the project get more contributors right so i think it's a responsibility of the community to maintain the project right and by community i mean even the users as well right so yeah so i've been talking a lot about tech and spec you know tooling specs all tech right but um i think it, it all comes down to people in the end right So one thing that um, that uh, I think we should be doing immediately is that organization leaders, organi uh, like leaders of OpenAPI, SNKPI, GraphQL, gRPC, RAML, everyone, uh, we should all collaborate on how to make things better for a single workflow from the user perspective. Um, the marketing efforts must be combined as well. I think uh, this is super important. And financial support is in, this is super important. Uh, it must be spread because it's not being it's not being like um, it's not being fair so far. So, for instance, we're happy that we're getting a lot of financial support on it's in KPI. Open API has also strong financial support, but JSON schema is almost getting nothing. And JSON schema is the backbone of Open API and it's in KPI. Uh, so this is just an example. I guess that Avro, Apache Avro is also not getting too much uh, financial support. So, so yeah, that will be cool that uh, we we all, uh, especially if, if you're the owner of a company and, and you're using these technologies, uh, please support these technologies because um, they're, they're super cool technologies and they're super, super, um, let's say it's strong in what you can do with this, but they're super weak right now because it's maintained by people in their spare time. And you know what happens with this is that people burns out. So, uh, so just so we can avoid people burning out because they don't get anything in return. Yeah, let's give them financial support and maybe with this we can, um, we can help them we can help them uh, dedicate to that the project uh, full time and not having to worry about uh, the project on spare time right we're doing this at postman by the way so we're um, we're creating a new initiative i mean kin lang is putting together a new initiative um, which is called open technologies at postman and we're helping async api open api and using schema for now we want to keep extending this, so so yeah, and and we want to ensure that these communities have the financial support they deserve, so they can continue uh, working on that, right? And something that that has been fully ignored, in my opinion, is that the user experience. Uh, we've been talking about machine readable, and 
lots of things around machine readable, but in the end, yeah, it's machine readable, but who's at the other side of the, the things is actually human, right? So um, even if it's a human putting together some code that will understand the, the, the spec, but it's a human in the end and user experience across the whole the whole uh, uh, ecosystem is it's really bad right it's, it's it's really bad like i was saying i was pointing out before this is this needs to be this needs to be improved and um, just as an example if i want to provide rest api graphql api and um, doing microservices with grpc or async API, I don't mind. I should be able to create APIs, production ready APIs in, in less than a day. And I mean, you might not be able to write your business logic in, in less than a day, but in less than an hour, you should be able to, to have something working, even if it's just with a console log or system print LN or something like that. Uh, but there should be something that is um that you should be able to work uh, to use in production and uh, it's only missing your business logic there so um, uh yeah and then i mean we've been seeing this trend uh as well with organizations we at async kpi try to be as transparent as possible and those who follow us can confirm and if we are not transparent at something please let us know but um I think transparency must, it's a must, right? So I think we should be asking all the organizations to be super transparent, not only with the money they have or where they spend the money, but also in, in how decisions are taken and who's taking these decisions and how, you know, and, and when they happen. And there should be like a log of things that uh, you can audit if you want, right? So. If you're a user of the specs and you don't know how things work in a specific um, organization and you try to find about it and you can't find anything, please let us know, right? Like this, and, and please ask for that to be transparent because this is all nonprofits. So they have to be transparent, right? It's, it's, a, it's our, it's a must actually. So to wrap up, um, just going to sum summarize here, I think um, we all agree that the API ecosystem is diverse. So it's impossible to have a single tool to rule, them, to rule them all or a single spec to rule them all. That's impossible, right? But um, that doesn't mean that you know, we should be, um, that should be stopping us from trying to, to get to that point, right? Um, so I think, uh, the specs and, and, and the tools becoming composable and extensible and uh, facilitating the evolution and interoperability all together should, uh, should make the things much better. How exactly are we going to do it? Don't know. We cannot solve the, the world, the, the problem uh, of the world here in a, in a single talk, right? I think we all have to discuss this and have to come up with a with an agreement and with a solution and um, and i think that spec authors especially you know those involved in authoring the spec uh, and and working closely with the spec must collaborate for the benefit of the user and i want to highlight this the benefit of the user so the something a, a response like i was saying in the beginning of my talk uh, like no this will put a lot of pressure on, on tooling vendors uh, that's not an option. No, that's not a solution. That's not a response, right? That's a response. That's a valid argument for us, the spec authors, but not for the users. So we must collaborate for the benefit of the user. And if that's pu putting a lot of pressure on, on the tooling vendors, then let's talk to them and see how we can fix this, uh, this pressure and how we can help them, right? But yeah, it, the ultimate goal should be the, the user experience, not our own user experience developing the specs, right? So, so yeah. And I think this this will be called out called out by all of us, right? Not just the, the authors, not just the people working on the specs, but also the users. And as a result of this talk, 
uh, and 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 as a result of this thought, I've been already working with Mike Ralston from OpenAPI, now working with Asa Postman and with Kim Lane and with other folks like you know, my friend Lucas Vernitschke uh, and many other people who are now uh, involved. We're working in creating a space where all the spec authors and organizations can talk about it and think about it. It doesn't have to be the beginning of a new foundation or anything. No, it's it's okay. Like we can stay like this, but we need a forum where we can all spec authors, tooling vendors, and users can come up together and uh, and debate how can we improve things because nobody is doing only REST APIs or only GraphQL APIs or only Kafka or only MQP or only WebSockets, right? No, nobody's doing just all of them, any of them alone. We are, you only have a REST API that sends a message to Kafka and another service that reacts uh, um, to this message and calls a gRPC API. So yeah, nobody's doing that, uh, except in the beginning of your company, probably you only have one style, but yeah, as long as your product matures, you, you have more than one style, right? So yeah, so, we're trying to push toward this direction, and I hope this uh, um, succeed. And and yeah, so nothing else from my side. I just want to thank you again for for listening, and and thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm on Twitter, nothing like everyone here. So if you want to follow me, um, I'll be happy to. Uh, to follow back and, and you can see me uh, on Twitter if, um, ranting about politics sometimes and, and but also posting funny things. And of course, things about this in KPI. So, so yeah, thanks a lot. All right, Fran, great presentation. And we're gonna move right